Why is ABC giving Oprah a chance to do an hour-long special, which is basically a commercial for Ozempic? Why is Big Pharma having access to your living rooms like this in an unfettered way? Kelly Means joins me to discuss today. He's a health researcher and author, also a whistleblower for Big Pharma, Big Food, all of those things. He joins us today. Thank you for joining me. Oh, pumped to be here. So Ozempic is something you get to talk about a lot. Can you talk about why this maybe is or is not surprising that there'll be a whole hour long special to talk about weight loss drugs? Well, unfortunately, this isn't surprising at all. Let me just back up. And, and, and I really think Ozempic is one of the biggest issues in the country because this is on track to be the best selling drug in American history. Novo Nordics, the parent company, you know, based in Denmark is now the most valuable company in Europe. It just surpassed uh, Louis Vuitton, you know, an iconic European Whoa. company. Now it's a now it's a drunk company. What's interesting is that Ozempic isn't the standard of care for obesity in Europe. They're projecting the vast majority of their profits from the United States. And this this company based in Denmark is one of the ten largest funders of media ads, one of the largest funders of academic research in the United States now actually one of the largest funders of civil rights groups. They actually have the NAACP and other civil rights groups literally lobbying for the approval of Ozempic and saying it's it's racist not to approve Ozempic. Um, you know, they're funding the media. They're funding all of our institutions uh, of trust here. And the reason this is important is because obviously we have a metabolic health crisis and an obesity crisis. 80% of American adults are overweight or obese. 50% of teens are overweight or obese. Um, and what the argument is, you know, and what 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 they're co-opting one by one, uh, people we trust, is to move obesity from a you know personal accountability issue, from a food issue, from an exercise issue, from you know really addressing the root cause of why this has exploded in the past forty years from our you know poisoned food system, and they're making it saying it's genetic. Oprah's actually apologized after getting paid off you know, at Weight Watchers and shifting Weight Watchers from a personal accountability group to an Ozempic prescriber. She's actually apologized for preaching personal accountability. And what this special represents is really the confluence of, of follow the money. You know, the Ozempic, the parent company is buying off the media. They're buying off the doctors who are going to be appearing on that program. Um, you know, and they're buying off all of the other groups that influence society. And it's, it, it's a real problem because it, it's 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 shadowing and hiding the actual real problem is that we're poisoning ourselves <laughs> right and i think oprah represents a good convergence of many things she represents women she represents a black population so what she's saying is it's not our fault we're just going to keep get getting fatter and fatter she actually says that the purpose, let's see, the purpose of the documentary coming up is to release the shame, judgment, and stigma surrounding weight. So it doesn't seem like at all she wants anybody to lose weight anymore. Yeah, it's actually just a totally schizophrenic argument because it's in the one in the one hand, it's promoting a drug that's expressly to lose weight. And on the other hand, it's about not shaming anybody. They're actually mixing up their arguments. I think what's so tragic about this is that the biggest social justice issue, the biggest inequality issue in the country is when it comes to nutrition. You know, a lower income person in the United States dies more than 10 years younger uh, than an upper income person. And that's that's not because of these fake social justice issues that we hear about on the news. That's almost demonstrably entirely because of nutrition. Um, you know, lower income communities, communities of color are actually absolutely getting decimated based on a rigged system, a rigged system that, you know, back when I worked for Coke lobbies, the food stamp program to basically only enable ultra processed food to where 10% of food stamps go to Coca-Cola and sugary drinks, where 70% of food stamp SNAP funding goes to ultra processed food. We subsidize ultra processed food for lower income people when you add up all the programs, $100 billion per year. This is not a free market. It's a totally rigged market against lower income people that's poisoning ourselves. The diabetes rate, 66% of, of Americans having prediabetes, 25% of Americans having fatty liver disease. These were unthinkable statistics. And instead of really calling that out, calling out the crony capitalism, cr calling out these companies, quite frankly, rigging our governmental institutions to prey upon poor people, particularly, um, Oprah is executing a cash grab. 
And I'll tell you, and I think we all know this, and the, all, all um, experience from chronic disease treatments show this, Ozempic is not going to reverse obesity. Um, Ozempic actually in the financial projections shows that if, as it's prescribed more, more obesity is going to go up, which follows the trend of other chronic disease treatments. You know, the more statins we prescribe, the more heart disease goes up. The more metformin we prescribe, the more diabetes goes up. SSRIs, the antidepressants, the most prescribed drug in the country. 25% of women are now on antidepressants. The suicide rates and depression rates are skyrocketing. This is a moral hazard that's blinding us from the root causes of why communities of color, why lower income communities particularly are getting so sick. Um, and it's tragic because then again, Oprah and these companies, and I help do this, weaponize this kind of shame issue, this let's not body shame, let's not fat shame. Nobody is shaming an individual. I'm a personal responsibility guy, Natalie. And, and I got to say, when 80% of the country clearly you know, is getting overweight or obese, I actually take that away from personal responsibility. There's a systemic issue driven by this devil's bargain between food and pharmaceutical companies. And it's not about the end. It, Oprah should be calling out the system, not propagating it. Right. Have you read The Dorito Effect? That's a fantastic book about how our brains are hijacked when we eat these foods in a way that we almost cannot uh, use personal responsibility. So it's systemic. Um, I want to I want to posit this because the idea that it's racist to tell people that they should not be fat or overweight, I think is in and of itself racism. If you look at, and follow me on this one, social security. So knowing that black people, specifically black men, are more likely to die early, so therefore less likely to take the social security that they pay into through their work and white people live longer, if we're saying work, pay into social security, die early, and then us white people will just benefit from that because you won't be around to collect, letting them die early is systemic racism. Do, do you see what I'm saying? A hundred, a hundred percent. And I really had, this has been a journey for me. And I think, you know, viewers, on the libertarian or conservative end of the aisle, I think we're reluctant to like meddle with the markets. And, you know, I used to argue for the food stuff companies, we don't, or, and even the pharma companies, we don't need any regulation, we don't need nanny states. What the invisible hand has done, and frankly, some evil people is, is rigged these incentives. And, and, and re really our systems are benefiting a, a, a privileged few at the expense of the masses. And it's not because of a free market. It's because of a, a rigged system. I, you know, I, I something I've been preaching is let's not get into conspiracies. Let's just look at raw economic facts. You know, with the way Medicaid and Medicare and other entitlement programs go, where they're paying millions of dollars for a lower income person who gets sick, right? There's a huge incentive of the largest industry in the country, the healthcare industry, for lower income communities to get sick because the government will be paying the bills for the the, the corporations. You know, and there's an incentive for food companies to rig our food. You mentioned the Dorito effect. You know, this is something I've been pointing out. When the cigarette industry started declining in the 1980s, food companies became one of the largest employers of scientists in the world. All the scientists from the tobacco companies went to the processed food companies. And when I say weaponized, I really mean it. Due to the fact that they've rigged the government institutions, you know, there's nothing conservative, there's nothing libertarian, there's nothing free market about the fact that we have thousands of chemicals and neurotoxins and addictive substances in our food that aren't legal in other countries. That's a rigging of the market. So, you know, I think what's so evil and what you really point out, and I again helped propagate this early in my career, is that that systems rigged to big benefit an elite few and then these social justice arguments are weaponized in order to shut people up then coca-cola and the pharma companies literally pay the naacp to call anyone who criticizes them racist they got to oprah and i don't know if she knows this or not i assume she doesn't fully understand it but they're using her as a tool right there's nothing that's more destructive to lower income uh, communities and communities of color than this devil's bargain where we're poisoning our population and then profiting the healthcare industry. And through, I think, being blinded by the tens of millions of dollars Oprah's made from Weight Watchers, you know, and, and that now pushing Ozempic, and there's a clear financial interest there. Um, mm -hmm. They can prescribe I, it now. I, I, Weight Watchers can now prescribe I, I think she's Ozempic.
Yeah. What's that? A Weight Watchers can now prescribe Ozempic. And oh, they she shifted is their major... entire business model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They um, shifted their entire business model. Yeah. But I can't totally give her the benefit of the doubt that she doesn't know better because there is now a mountain of litigation from people saying, I will have diarrhea for the rest of my life. I have permanent stomach uh, paralysis. I was not properly warned. I uh, There's so many people having contraindications from this drug. We can't really say that she doesn't see that, can we? It's a great point. I, I try to be charitable, but um, she's either being completely ignorant or there is real uh, culpability here for Oprah. Um, my point is twofold on Ozempic. Number one, even if the drug worked perfectly, this is not the public policy. You know, this is not the route to address our obesity epidemic. Um, you know, I was at a playground recently with my two year old son and Almost every kid there is eating ultra-processed food, drinking soda. We're, we're poisoning our population. And it's Orwellian to say, as Oprah and others are saying, as this special will shamefully say, that Ozempic should be an intervention for kids. You know, the American Academy of Pediatrics has recently said that it needs to be a frontline intervention for 12-year-olds. That, that's 50% of 12-year-olds. So we, we're literally having an assembly line where we're poisoning our kids. And then, you know, with the help of Oprah pushing this $15,000 a year per person treatment, when obviously we could be taking that money, you know, half that money and fixing our food system and just, I, I'm just being blunt, stop poisoning our population. So that's number one, it's the wrong public policy. Obviously, Oprah should be talking about, you know, getting to the root cause. Number two is the drug is a disaster, as you pointed out. It's actually being investigated in the EU for causing suicidal ideation. You know, we fail to realize our body is connected and serotonin is produced in our gut. Um, 95%, this this hormone that regulates our contentment, it, Ozempic is gut dysfunction. So it's actually causing a sharp increase in depression, suicidal ideation, stomach paralysis, thyroid cancer. And actually 30% of people who are on the drug, even when it's paid for by insurance, have to go off of it within the first couple of months because there's such pronounced side effects. So, you know, liquid anorexia, injectable anorexia is really not the cause. It's not the cure for obesity. That's what this drug is. It's, 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 it's very problematic. The last thing I'll just say real quick is that the studies themselves are rigged. The FDA panel was stacked with folks that were paid for by Ozempic and shockingly, the studies that led to approval didn't take into account muscle mass. And now it's coming out that this drug acts absolutely decimates muscle mass. The actual guidance is that if you take Ozempic, you need to work out five times a week. If people were working out five times a week, there wouldn't, wouldn't be this it. problem. Yeah. So so um, the, the drug, I believe, will be recalled. And I do think anyone who's pushing this drug, anyone who's involved with this infomercial coming up with Oprah, uh, we should hold them to account when that eventually happens. Now, I heard you on the Honestly podcast, and you were taken to task because the doctors yes. on that podcast said, yes, but heart disease is so much more dangerous than the drug. Uh, I'm going to let you respond to that. You can see how my, by my face how I feel about it. Yeah, I, 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 I debated a Harvard doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. who was paid for by Novo Nordics, who's, you know, works for, uh, with Fatima Cody Stanford, who shamefully went on 60 Minutes and said obesity is genetic. And, you know, it, it's, it's par for the course. Uh, she used credentialism, you know, questioning that I, you know, wasn't a doctor like her, which I think is a strength because I don't have a financial interest for people to get sick. Mm -hmm. She scoffed at the idea that um, this could be linked to depression, which anyone who understands the science that I mentioned, the microbiome and serotonin would understand. Uh, only months later, the EU report comes out and there's, you know, serious investigations into that. And she, you know, made this argument that, you know, really that the this is the miracle cure, right? That this is the, you know, panacea to address obesity, address heart disease, address these different things. Right. In Again, a way that made it, it seem like we can't do anything else about it. We've dug ourselves it, in and we can't fix heart disease. It's just, it's, it's like, uh, almost like termites in the building. <laughs> this is the life's mission of myself and my sister, who is a physician in the system and left and is now an advocate. This is a spiritual crisis we're facing right now. The medical system, which is the largest and fastest growing industry in the country, 
is highly incentivized to have this cynical view of the American patient that they just want to kill themselves, that they just want to be poisoning themselves. That they, that, you know, in, in this first week of Stanford Med School, my sister was told, you know, by the dean of the school that the American patients are lazy, that they want to basically be, they're going to keep getting sick no matter what they do. The medical system is not here to make us better and healthier. They're here to clean up the mess, which makes them money. And that's propagated throughout the entire system. So what this Harvard doctor on Barry Weiss's podcast literally was saying is that the American people are so suicidal that they can't help themselves from trying to poison themselves. We should not be speaking about the fact that we're poisoning themselves and have literally trillions of dollars of incentives stacked against the American people. We shouldn't be changing those. We should be letting the American people poison themselves and then give them a weekly injection for the rest of their lives, which is just one in a series of chronic disease treatments that hasn't worked. I can't stress this enough. 90% of medical spending is on chronic disease treatment like Ozempic, things that you take forever. That has been an absolute disaster. Medical miracles were pre-World War II you know, for acute issues that were going to kill you right away, surgical procedures, antibiotics, things like that. They've taken that trust, and now we have this litany of pills and treatments that we take for life. All that's happened is all those conditions have gone up. This is a lie. This is a game that's being played. The medical system is not good at treating the chronic conditions that are plaguing American life, heart disease, obesity, uh, diabetes, depression, things like that. That happens outside the doctor's office. This is why Ozempic is so important because in a, in a moment where we're going bankrupt from healthcare costs, where 40% of high schoolers have a mental health disorder, where fatty liver disease, obesity, diabetes, even dementia we're seeing among teens, where everything is kind of going up all at once, autism, autoimmune conditions, these are all related. These are all related to core you know, factors you know, of metabolic health, food, exercise, sleep, et cetera. And we have a moment right now with 80% of the country overweight or obese. Are leaders like Oprah going to say, we need to assess what's going on? We need to assess what's happening to the human capital of this country, where life expects to declining well before COVID in the most sustained way since 1860? where we are becoming infertile and sperm count is down 80% and PCOS, the leading cause of female infertility is skyrocketing. We're having trouble procreating as a species. Are we going to get to the root cause and really figure this out as RFK is talking about, as frankly, President Trump is talking about more and more, or are we going to like fund the most widest drug in American history where we literally tell 12 year olds that obesity is an Olympic deficiency and give them a shot for the rest of their lives. This is an existential moment and Oprah should be absolutely ashamed of herself that she's funding and participating in this infomercial uh, yeah. to give people exactly the wrong answer. Uh, this is what Thomas Saz warned about in the 60s that we're becoming the therapeutic state and it is the replacement. We have, we have separation of church and state, but we have no more separation of pharmacy, pharmacology and state. So we're here. Uh, thank you for ringing in on this. It's a pleasure to talk to you. You can follow thank Kelly you. Means on X. Uh, you always have great interviews that you do, and I appreciate you making time for Redacted. Thank you, Allie. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it, and we will see you next time, everyone.